there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It is sat chat time, and I, you know, I'm turning this camera on. I do not know what I'm gonna talk about really because uh, it's been, it's been a, uh, I don't want to say a crazy week. It's been, it's been a week. It's been um, interesting. I've been very tired, but uh, but it's been good. It's been pretty well, pretty good. I mean, there's just like any week, there are ups and downs. This is up in my YouTube channel right now. It is a real time tutorial if you want to paint that along with me. This swatch here. It's a swatch of the paints that I used. They are the Mission Gold uh, 48 set. They're called triple pans, but they're they're half pans. Um, and I did film a review on those, but I'm not going to post it yet because after I posted that, the paint set sold out. So I'm going to wait till they get a chance to restock it before I post the video because I know it's frustrating if somebody reviews something that you can no longer find. But I was really happy with that paint. It was a lot of fun to do that. You can obviously do it with whatever paints you have. You don't need those paints. I was a sucker for a cute palette and yeah, I need to, uh, I need to just tell you another no buy month, I think, because living high on the hog, living high on the art supply hog, man. I went to Portland on Wednesday. I think I mentioned it last week that I was going to go down to Portland to help my daughter, Lila, in her film class do this, um, uh, do this project. Basically, I was going to be talent. They had, they had to do a 10 minute live edited segment for like a TV show. And the premise of the show is like self-made Mainers. And so I did this 10 minute segment with, uh, one of the students was like the interviewer. Then there were camera people and there were directors and there were editors and there. I mean, there was like probably about 12 people. If you, if you go on my Instagram page, I posted a picture of most of the whole crew. Um, but where Instagram kind of like cuts things into a square that people cut off on the ends. But I think it was probably about 12 people and that's their group and what they did for the grade. And it's going to go on their, um, showcase next week, I think, final for, for their final. So it's their final project, their final grade. And it was a lot of fun. I just love being around young people. They're just so exuberant and energized. And I just want to bathe in their idealism. It's just so nice to be around people that are just starting and they're so hopeful. And you just say, hold on to that. Just, just hold on to that. And, you know, you just want to say, you know, you are at this time in your life where you have proximity to tons of people that are interested in the same things you are and that have the time to just explore their curiosities. Just don't waste it. Get out of your dorm rooms, get off your phones and embrace it and enjoy it. And I, I think they do. Uh, so it was fun. It was fun. So we went to Portland. I had to be up. I had to be awake and camera ready and out the door at 6 a.m. on Wednesday morning. I was afraid I, and I was nervous for days ahead. Days, I wasn't nervous about going and doing the thing. I was nervous about oversleeping or not getting enough sleep the night before. I woke up probably about 4.50. I had set my alarm set for 5. So I did wake up a little bit before my alarm. I turned, because I bought a coffee maker. I don't know if I mentioned that. I bought a coffee maker um, a couple weeks ago because I've been using a French press. My coffee maker died like a, over a year ago when I've been using this little French press I have ever since. But with the girls um, going to be home here and there during the summer, I always have to press two pressings because it's just a little French press. So I have mine and, and theirs. So I'm like, I'm getting a coffee maker because I just don't want to do that anymore. And I forgot how easy a coffee maker is compared to a French press. I set it up the night before. I just hit the button. When I got up in the morning, I went down, washed my face, and I um, put my moisturizer on so it could seek in, and I sipped my coffee for a little bit, then I make up hair out the door. So efficient. So I can get out the door in an hour if I have to, if I've showered the night before, but it's not something I like to do. I definitely am a leisurely morning person, and I always feel bad about being a leisurely morning person because it's like, there's so many things I could be getting done. I should own my morning, you know, like all the productive people say, but I am, a, a, I need to start my day gently, you know? I, I own the midday. <laughs> In the morning, I need to I need to ease myself in a little bit. I need I need solitude. I need coffee, <laughs> coffee and solitude. I've always been that way. So I just have to be productive other times. I guess if I miss that, then I feel like my whole day my whole day is off. And um, today has been a very weird day. I'm a little rough, a little rough today. Last night, I, I was kind of cold. So okay, so let's rewind a little bit. So I went to Portland and. Um, Lyle had some plans. We're going to spend the day together. We had a few things that we might do. Definitely want to go to Trader Joe's because I've never been to Trader Joe's. It was awesome. Oh my gosh. I got this whole cartload of groceries for $130. I could not believe it. And it was all like specialty vegan stuff. It was amazing. So many good things. Everything I've tried that I bought has been delicious. And 
I want to go again. I totally, I think, you know, even though it is like almost a three hours, about two and a half hour drive, it, I, I think I would go once a month. It's so good. It's so, and it's so much cheaper than the grocery stores around here. I wish we could get a Trader Joe's in the Bangor area because I think it would be packed. And I mean, we have a couple like natural food stores in the Bangor area. I think if we bought a Trader Joe's in, I think they already have a built-in audience. I mean, although it probably put those other two stores out of business, which would be a bummer. But I mean, those stores are so expensive that yeah, I go to them, but not that often, not as often as I would go to a Trader Joe's. Even it's way cheaper than the regular grocery stores we have up here. So it's, uh, and the quality is really good. So I wish we had one. Totally wish we had a Trader Joe's. So we went to that. We had lunch at this place called the Friendly Toast, which I guess is a chain. I didn't realize that, but um, it, we got the uh, Lily's vegan pasta. We both got it. It was so good. And parking is sketchy. I do not like city parking. I don't like city driving. As soon as I got to, I got, actually drove to Gorham where, because, um, uh, where she goes to college has a, has a campus in Gorham, a campus in Portland, and most of the, all the dorms are currently in Gorham. And so once we got there, she drove because I was just like, duh. I'm too nervous. I'm too ner I'm too hesitant driving in the city. I will like wait too long. Like if there's a car coming, like where people would have like jet out, I would wait, and then I probably wouldn't end up finding a spot to pull out into the traffic because I'm just kind of I'm not used to it. Bangor's not that busy. It's busy enough, but it's not like Portland or anything. So she did all the driving, and yeah, I don't like that the parking situation, having them an app to, you know, pay for your parking. It's just kind of weird. I don't like it. I don't like all that technology. I don't like Big Brother knowing where I'm parking my vehicle. No, I need to have some anonymity. I need to have some anonymity as I travel through the world. I like paying cash, and I don't like, of course, I have a phone, so I'm probably getting tracked all over the place, but I don't think anyone cares what I do. But if they did, if I was an interesting person, I don't want people knowing where I'm going. <laughs> I don't want an app for that. Turn my data off. Nobody knows where I am. <laughs> I leave my data on, but anyway, I could. I could shut it off. Pay for that. that probably doesn't work though, because if a cell phone call can get through, then probably the cell phone towers can, you know, tell where you are. I don't know why I think so much about how I need to <laughs> hide from the grid, but it, it comes in. It comes into my mind sometimes. I don't know why. So anyway, we were also going to go to, there's a couple art stores in Portland and I was thinking I wanted to go to, but yes, you know what? I didn't need anything. And I was like looking around thinking like, well, what do I want to buy? I even took a photo of my Stabilos because I know there are colors I didn't have. I don't even particularly like these. And it's like, well, I could get the other colors that I don't have yet. I'm like, Lindsay, you need to slow your roll. I was thinking I would get some, a, um, a tube of PBK27, which is this black right here because it granulates so beautifully. I have tubes of liquid charcoal that granulates. I've got tubes of several Mars blacks that have different undertones that granulate beautifully. It's like, no, I don't need it. I'm just like looking for things. I was looking for things that I would buy at an art supply store. And I have to say, I was completely wiped out after filming. I, driving makes me very tired, but also like performing live makes me tired. When I do a live stream, I'm exhausted after I do a live stream. For some reason, recorded stuff doesn't um, doesn't tire me out, but like live performance, stuff like that does. And I was really tired. Lyle was really tired. We went to Trader Joe's and we went to lunch. I'm trying to think if we went anywhere else. Um, oh, then I uh, helped her. I wanted to bring, I took the, I didn't bring the convertible. I brought the Jeep because I figured that if I could take some of her stuff back with me, because she only has like another week of classes, if I could take some stuff back with me, then she'll be able to pack up the rest of the stuff in her car. Uh, she has a minivan. She has my old minivan. And then that would save us all a trip going down to pack up. Plus, like, it's just going to be chaotic, I think, moving out. If she can move herself out, like, take a few baskets down or whatever in between classes and do that, it would be a lot less hectic than trying to get down there and, and help her move out. I could just take half of her stuff home with me. So that's what we did. And um, yeah, I was exhausted. <laughs> so it was probably like, oh, just before 3, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm like, I'm ready to go home. I've got a two and a half hour drive ahead of me. And um, I was exhausted. So I got home a little after 5.30, I think, somewhere around there. And it's kind of nerve, it was, I was a little nerve wracking because I got on the interstate to go north. And I see one way it says I-95 North, Augusta, Belgrade, I think, something like that. It's like, well, I would go through that to go home. But then the GPS was taking me on 295 and it was like uh, Freeport, something else. But I'm like, I am not brave when it comes to driving. I'm like, I'm going to go do whatever the GPS could tell me, whatever. And I would end up, I'm going to end up wherever the GPS tells me because I don't trust my sense of direction well enough. 
Uh, so once I got out of that Portland area and there wasn't any turns, I was like, okay, I'm good. Crank up the the uh, satellite radio and just uh, just head home. But I, I'm not used to sitting for so long. So like my shoulders were like my shoulders have been so so sore, and I keep finding myself like like uh, rising them up. So it's like I keep telling myself, put your shoulders down and put your shoulders relax re relax your face so you don't get wrinkles. Put your shoulders down so <laughs> so you're not stressed out and breathe. <sighs> I don't know. I, I've been seeing all these. Like I, I, th I mentioned it in that that cla that um video when we were doing that. I keep seeing these ads and these videos about skincare and um people like young girls, not young girls, but I would say like girls in their women in their twenties, late teens, saying you know train yourself to relax your face, don't make expressions so you don't get wrinkles. I'm like man, I've been making so many expressions my whole life. That's a lost cause. But every time I, I do kind of think, okay, relax your mouth because I'm noticing like that little line right there. I'm like. Oh, relax, your, relax your forehead. Cause I'm always like, you know, ooh, my eyebrows are like great chum, great chum marks over here. My eyebrows are like, you know, <laughs> all over the place. I'm like, relax your forehead, relax your face, relax your. It's just nerve wracking. Oh, uh, so I have to like just I have to watch what I consume because I keep seeing ads for skincare. I keep seeing ads for like um, you know, shapewear and things like that. It's like, why am I seeing all this? I feel like it's just getting like thrown at us. Maybe because summer is coming and everyone's just very um very conscious so they're just like scattershot marketing to all women about their insecurities i don't know but i don't like it i don't like it and you just gotta i just gotta like turn off the social media and just walk away because you know if you're feeling bad if it makes you just constantly feel bad or question how you look or question uh everything then and not in a good way, then it's time to time to let it go. I've been I have been though um, watching this channel called The Daily Stoic, and I mean you can honestly get the gist of stoicism in like a video or two. It does a lot of the greatest hits keep on coming. You know it's the same thing over and over again. But I'm like, huh? I think I will look for the rules of stoicism. So I printed off the basic um, the basic the twelve rule or the rules of stoicism, and there were like twelve rules. I'm like, yeah, these are great. They kind of remind me of the the eight habits of optimum health. Seven, yeah. It's seventh habit, seven habits of highly effective people and the eight habits, eight weeks, no, it's eight weeks to optimum health. I don't know how many habits there were, but anyway, it kind of reminds me a lot of that, like going on news diet, you know, don't consume news for a while because if it's important, you'll hear about it. But a lot of the times we just kind of doom scroll and we like uh, consume all this negative information that makes us feel bad, quite frankly. But anyway, in one of the skincare things that I saw, um, I people were talking about using um, like tritonin and uh, things like that, like your teenage kids would get for like acne and stuff, that prescription cream that actually is good for wrinkles. And I'm like, how can that be? Because it's so drying. But apparently it, it produced it it uh, enhances skin turnover, those retinols. And so then I was thinking, well, there was one that was uh, switched to over the counter, differing. So I remember buying that for the kids at one point. And uh, you know, just that little, that, that little window of time when, um, when you get acne in your teens. And I remember that that one was available over the counter and it was a pretty strong retinol. And so, and I was feeling conscious of all these lines in here. So I bought a tube of it and it's really strong. I, I couldn't use it more than one night a week because it, my skin would get so dry. But then I watched a, um, a video about, the, it's called Adipaline Gel, and they were talking about is it effective on wrinkles, what are the studies that have been done on it, and there was a really interesting study that they took these women in Chile and they had them use Adipaline cream, the stronger one, the 3%, not the 1% that you would get at like um, the, dry, the grocery store in my case, because if it ain't available at the grocery store, I really don't need it. Uh, I'm not going to specialty stores. I like make one stop. I am just... So, you know, I guess the fact that I went to Trader Joe's and out to lunch in Portland was a big shopping day for me. But anyway, I digress. Uh, the story was that they gave, these, they gave these women in Chile, they were older women, the Adipaline gel at night, had them use it every night. And in the daytime, they had them use a 50 SPF 50 sunscreen. And... Chile, that's Central, is it South America or Central America? But anyways, close to the equator, much closer than Maine. They noticed not only a, an improvement in the skin, the skin appearance, an improvement in the thickness of the dermis and epidermis, and also that some precancerous cells had been, it had reduced precancerous cells and eliminated some precancerous cells, like from skin cancer. And I'm like, well, that I could totally get behind, because actually, if, the, if we're doing a retinol, will 
you know, prevent or make your skin turn over enough that you're eliminating those precancerous cells. I think that's a pretty great, that's a pretty great reason to use it. So then I found on Amazon, I actually had heard about this from the same uh, dermatologist, dermatologist in a different video, this uh, Gold Bond Face and Body Moisturizer. It's really thick. It doesn't dry my skin out. I'm not using it every night though, maybe like every other night because I have dry skin anyway, but it's, uh, it was seven ounces and it was $12 or 11 something. And then there was like a 40% off subscribe and save. Like if you, if you signed up for subscribe and save, which I had the next one coming in like six months, um, you get 40% off. So I paid like $6 for the seven ounce tube of face and body um, retinol. I'm, I'm only using it on my face and like my neck and like, chest and back, like, area where I do wear a lot of, like, strapless summer, uh, summer dresses and stuff, and I get a lot of skin, like, sun exposure, and then I'll use a sunscreen in the day, obviously, but, uh, because you don't want to have the retinol on in the day. The sun will deactivate the retinol, and also it makes you more prone to sunburns and stuff, because you're, you're promoting that in brand new skin turnover, so, you know, you're like a little baby mouse. You gotta have the sunscreen on. But anyway, Gold Bond, well, Gold Bond face and body retinol and it has the vitamins in there so the vitamins will will reduce um dark spots so i've got some freckles on my hands and i've got some freckles right here that is from i'm sure just missing with the sunscreen and you wash your hands so much it's hard to keep sunscreen on your hands so i'm putting a tube by the door so i can remember to put the sunscreen on my hands before i go out since my hands are on camera all the time i'm very self-conscious about that and i want to uh prevent any more freckles and hopefully reduce the freckles that are on my on my hands already. I know I am a victim of this skincare wave of anxiety and insecurity that is pulsating and washing over the online community right now, but I'm trying to keep my head about me and, um, and be a level headed about that. So what else? So yesterday I was so tired. I, so Wednesday was my big trip to the, my, my big trip to the city. Oh, to the city friends. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a big trip. So yesterday I was also tired and I was working on this um, card making project and I told myself, Lindsay, work on the card making in the morning. So every morning I get up and I have my leisurely coffee and then I walk the dog and then I will, often I'll go on com the computer and I will check email and I will do admin and things like that. But I'm like, nope, the computer is powered down. I powered it down uh, Tuesday night because I didn't want to go back in and check anything. I needed to settle down early, get to sleep. And I knew I wasn't going to check it at all on Wednesday because I'd be gone. So I'm like, I'm just going to leave that power down. I don't need to edit anything. If I need something immediately, I've got my Chromebook or my phone. I can, I can check. And so like, don't even power off the computer. Come downstairs and finish that guitar card that you've been talking about making. And I started it and I was not, I was not vibing. I was not vibing. It was not, I was not having fun. I was not like, in the zone, I was not in the flow state and I was really frustrated because I thought I would have this card. I wanted to do a few different ver versions, a few different ideas with this, with these stamps. And and I wanted to come up with a batch of guitar themed cards because I have so many friends that play guitar. I've got family members that are musicians. I thought it'd be great to have a stash of those on hand. And I was just not inspired. And every drawer I had to open and pull stuff out of, I was just getting more and more and more overwhelmed and uninspired. And I'm like, oh, I was just so frustrated. And so I worked for about two and a half hours on it. I'm like, that's it, I'm gonna go eat because I'm hungry and this is not going well. And so I went and had lunch and I was watching um, the last episode of Great Expectations that was on Hulu. Hulu, was it Hulu or Showtime? I think Hulu, six part series. It's been pretty dark and dour, quite frankly. I know they had it tough back then, but man, it was just, it was dark. It was dark. Actually had a pretty good ending. And I was telling my husband how it ended because he watched two episodes like, I'm done. This is nothing like the book. <laughs> like, well, I never read the book, so I have nothing to compare it to. And it uh, doesn't make me want to read the book, I'll tell you that, but it did have a pretty good, a pretty happy ending. I guess it was not, um, not canon or not, I need a tissue, my gosh, my nose is running again. It was not as the, uh, as the book ended, apparently. But I think it was an alternate ending. I think, I think Dickens thought about redoing it, maybe because the fans didn't like the way that, that it ended. I don't know. The fans are always right, as they say. <laughs> uh, so where was I? Okay, so I, I read that. And I'm like, I am so tired. And I, I never nap. I could probably count on one handy mom naps I've taken in my adult life. And I don't think I've taken a nap since... I don't know. I must have been sick. It's been years. I don't know. 
I just can't sleep during the day. And I was so tired and I was cold and I'm like, am I coming down with something? And I went and put, I put my house coat on and I laid down on the couch and I, I think I maybe dozed off for like 10 minutes or something. But I, I, I don't know, I had something boring on YouTube. I put something boring on YouTube. I think it was about some new mortgage um, rules that are <laughs> for first time home buyers. Something I'm like not at all affected by or interested in. Well, I guess I'm someone interested. I'm always interested in weird random stuff, but I put that on and I conked out for about 10 minutes or so. And I was like, whoa. And I still couldn't get warm. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, I'm like, I need to move around or something. So I, I'm like, well, I've been thinking about putting the pottery wheel back out of the pottery shed because I don't use it out there. And I'm not afraid of getting, making a mess. I have actually, I've used it once up in there. It's not that messy. I'm not afraid of making a mess. People suggested that maybe that's why I didn't use it over there. It's like, look, I'm not afraid of making a mess. Who do you think you're dealing with here? So I'm just like, I think it's so dark over there. I just don't, I feel so just, I don't know, hold up over there. I don't, I don't like it. And in my pottery shed, it's warm. It's always warm in there in the summer because the sun just kind of bakes it and it's just the breezes coming in from the doors. I can hear the birds and the dog can be out back on her run and uh, it's pleasant. I like it out there. So I dragged my pottery wheel out back and I dragged all my pottery accessories out back and I put the bench back that I had over there before and uh, made some storage, put some boxes underneath that have been just like stacked up in the middle of the room because I'm, I've got a big project I'm working on and I'm actually done the project, but there's this kind of it's like an adjacent part of the project that may happen, may not happen. I don't know. I think it will happen, but if it doesn't happen, not going to break my heart, but I still need to keep certain supplies just in case until the last bits are filmed if they do need that. But uh, so that stuff, those big boxes are underneath my bench. So now it's more clear in there and it's more fresh. So if I do want to do some like card making in there, and I think that might be part of it. I feel like since I did started card making in here in the filming room, yes, it's warm. I love that. But uh, I like having that. I like standing up and having a big space because I always have to get up and cut something or die cut something. And my die cutters in there, uh, my cardstock's all in there, my paper's all in there. Even though I have all these ink pads in here, I still end up running back there. And card making, it just seems like it's such a big ordeal sometimes. I need all these different bits and bobs and pieces, and I brought a lot of the stuff in here, but I don't like doing it in here. Except for the fact that it's warm in the winter. Uh, if it's something where I'm going to need embellishments and different papers and things like that, I don't really like doing that in here. If it's just my artsy fartsy cards, like I'm just gonna take a random pile of crap and make some cards with it, that's great in here. I don't mind that. But if I'm like using a particular product because um, like I wanna help a company out or something, then, or if I was sponsored, then then it's it becomes a little bit more overwhelming, I guess. So I was feeling very overwhelmed. So I think I'm just gonna move my ink pads back. But you know what, I wanna come up with a system, I think. If I'm gonna make cards, I've gotta get rid of the Minutia because the minutia is driving me freaking bonkers. I don't want to have 50 ink pads. I don't want to have 100 embellishments. I don't want to have uh, All these dies all this all that I don't want to have so many options because all these options are making it take so long and are making it suck the joy out of doing it you know, I need like a stamp set and you know some cardstock and but it's also going to be interesting, you know? I don't want it to be boring cards, so it's it's hard. i got to figure out a system where maybe I have 10 ink pads, like bright colors that I can, like, you know, stamp on a couple pads and get the color I want. I've got to, I've got to minimize it a little bit because right now it's not sparking joy, it's sparking contempt, and I need to find a way to make it more, uh, more enjoyable. Like, I was using the little sponges here, and I was blending the ink on the stamps with the sponges and I kind of like that. And I'm like, I could have uh, just three ink pads. I could blend my colors with the sponges on the stamp and then not contaminate my ink pads. You know, it just seems like a big ordeal sometimes and I don't want it to feel like a big ordeal. I want it to feel fun again. I want it to feel carefree. I used to make a card in half an hour. I mean, I can't tell you the last time I made a card in half an hour, unless it was part of a huge batch and I was working on it for two days and one card happened to be half an hour. So yeah, I definitely want to figure out a way that I can really enjoy the card making again. Uh, what else? Oh, um, oh my gosh, we're almost to the, I didn't have anything to talk about. Oh, so, uh, okay, so yesterday, remember I was saying I was cold? So I was really cold. And Jason is home last night and he goes over to the thermostat and he just turns up the thermostat and he's like, huh, he goes, it feels cold in here to me, but I didn't hear the furnace kick on. So 
he turned it way up, no furnace kicked on. I'm like, oh, that's weird. And so, and I hadn't showered yesterday because I took a bath the night before. And so I didn't notice that we didn't have any hot water. <laughs> and our hot water is heated by our furnace. So Jason went downstairs and he made sure the furnace was turned on. Sometimes I'll turn off the furnace if I'm gonna be filming. But I'm like, no, I haven't filmed any class content this week. I don't usually turn it off for YouTube. Um, I always wonder if like that might be bad for the furnace to turn it off. I don't know, He's, my husband says it's not but I will turn off the furnace if I'm gonna be doing a bunch of class film, filming, but otherwise it's on because it heats our hot water. And, and nothing, nothing. And he's looking around and there's nothing. And you know, but I had noticed like a burning plastic smell, like over the like now and then. And I'm like, what is that? Nobody else could smell it. And I'm like, I smell burning plastic. If you walk down the stairway to the basement, I'm like I'm smelling this once in a while, but I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. It didn't seem to be coming from the furnace or any lights or anything, so I, Figured I was having a stroke, I don't know. And I think that might have been what it was because I guess there was like this um, this insulation burnt off some wire in a part of the furnace and like it even burnt the paint off like the outside of the box when the insulation got burnt up. Anyway, luckily it didn't start a fire in the house. It just, you know, made the furnace not work. So that's best uh, case scenario. So Jason put a call in last night to our oil company and they came out first thing this morning and actually fixed it. So that was good. Haven't seen the bill yet, so it might not be good. It's been an expensive year for heating stuff at this house. We had to have a huge repair on our heat pump. Actually, it was last year, but the end of last year, I, I finished up beginning of this year. What an ordeal, <laughs> what an ordeal, my goodness. Um, with the pandemic and, and parts being hard to come by and whatnot, but yeah. Home ownership, friends, it's not all it's cracked up to be. All you renters out there, you know, the grass is not always greener. Your rent is the most you're gonna pay. Your mortgage is the least you're gonna pay. So always remember that if you're thinking about buying a house, <laughs> think of that little paradigm. But all in all, you know, I, I like having a house. You know that you know, you're gonna be living where you're living, which is nice. You can't get, uh, you know, the building can't get sold on you when you, your rent doesn't get raised or anything. But then there's those, you know, you need a new leach field or you need a new furnace. But it's fixed. Hopefully it was only like an hour repair. So hopefully it's not too horrible. Um, but now we have heat. Luckily we have multiple sources of heat because we live in Maine and it gets very cold in the winter. So you don't want to be stuck with just one furnace. So we have a heat pump in the addition and we have a fireplace in the living room. So we started a fire last night. I'm like, well, there's two ways I can approach. I can look at this. I can be stressed out that our furnace is not working or I can pour myself a glass of wine and enjoy the fire. And that's what I did. I poured myself a glass of wine, sat by the fire and, uh, decided to relax. So that's a stoic thing. You can't, you can't control what is what is given to you, what is thrown at you sometimes in life. You can't control your circumstances, but you can control how you react to them. So there's a stoic principle for you to end this sat chat. Don't forget Michael's class on May 12th. I'll sign up for that. It's free. I'll sign up in the video description. And other than that, check out the other videos. I did post a card making video this week though, using acrylic paint pens. You can check that out if you want to, um, as well as a, I don't know. Oh yeah, rated my artist grade watercolors that posted this week and I will have a student grade showdown next week if you want to see how my student grade watercolors rank. That's all for today. I uh, hope you have a wonderful weekend and let me know what you're up to in the comments below. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy crafting. Bye!